the, ser- the title for this series is How to Increase Your Child's Motivation So You Don't Have to Nag, Yell and Lose It to Get the Kids Moving So the first two sessions we've uh, dealt with some issues The first session we dealt with very young toddlers about the routine behaviours Second session yesterday we talked about academic um, behaviours like learning, things here, spelling, uh, uh, homework and, and HBL Okay, so remember to go uh, watch those replays if they are of interest to you Okay Admin Matters, what does Elephant do if you are the first time listening to me? Um, yes, this is what I have to say every session. Uh, we do two things. Number one is that we send out monthly boxes to families so that parents can teach your kids using Montessori-inspired uh, materials and, and strategies. Okay, we cover all the essential preschool skills. Number two that we do, and it is Elephant Tribe, which is, I'm opening Elephant Tribe right now. Okay, so um, Elephant Tribe is an online membership where we coach and teach parents um, how to parent and teach your child through Montessori inspired strategies because it's all about um, child centered learning. It's all about following the rhythm and the season of the child so that we work with his. Um, the season that he's in, we work with his developmental needs, we work with his sensitive period so that we are not going against the grain. We are not like trying to teach him something he's not ready for or we're trying to force him to learn something that, that he doesn't want to learn. So we are actually working with nature, we're working with his um, a rhythm, okay, so that, he, uh, so that we will increase his motivation and, and that he's actually interested in the stuff that we're teaching him. Yeah, basically that's that. Okay, and I'll talk about uh, about Elephant Tribe at the end of today's session. Okay, and today this is the question that we are tackling. Why are other people's kids self-motivated but mine are not? Okay, um, I have to apologize for this question because it's a bait. It's a bait question. Basically, this question is all about comparing comparing our kids. Like we're always looking at other people's kids and saying, like, how come their kids can do this? How come my kids cannot do that? Uh, how come their kids are walk faster? Mine is still crawling. How come um they go for so many enrichment classes? My mine not interested in anything, you know. But I just want to, um, it's a warning for all of us, myself included, because we sometimes get caught in this whole comparing trap, right? That comparing kids takes your eyes off your own child and makes you look at another child hoping or thinking that, that the other child is your, your child, right? So let's try to stop this um, very bad comparing habit because I think it's very ingrained into Singaporeans, it's very ingrained into us, maybe Asian countries, perhaps like we will, our parents, right? How many of you, your parents are always comparing you against a cousin or a family friend? Mine. Oh, no more comparing. See and appreciate your child for the special individual he is. Or tomorrow in the day, tell your kid like how special he is, okay? Look him in the eye and say, wow, you, I really thank God for you. Or I'm really thankful you are my son or my daughter because... Then you fill in the blanks, okay? Find something sincere, find something true, find something special about your child and praise him. And then you, I want you to enjoy his face as he lights up. I want you to enjoy your daughter's um, eyes as she lights up, as she hears these words. And when you have that trusted relationship with a uh, trusted and, and very close and bonded relationship with your child, right? That's when the magic happens. That's when everything you want to teach him, be it maths, phonics or whatever, you know, skill that you want to teach him will be so well received by him. He, I mean, our children aim to please us, right? Um, if if you have that kind of very close relationship with your child, you can teach him anything, he will go to the moon and back for you. My tips for you tonight, okay, so I want to, I want to assure you, I want to um, tell you that you have a lot of power as a parent. And in fact, I was just reading this book, um, this book about how, how children succeed, how, how children, how, how do, how do uh, children, yeah, how children succeed. Um, and it's, it's very interesting that they, they studied a lot of families over like uh, very poor neighborhoods in America and they found that if, uh, if, a, if the child has a positive and warm relationship with a parent, okay, it doesn't even have to be a whole family, a complete family, because a lot of them are single families, right? Single parent families. As long as a child has a trusted relationship with a parent, a grandparent, or like a caregiver, that protects him from so many of life stresses later on in life. 
without this trusted early relationship, he is very prone to um, all the vices and all the bad influences in the future. For example, like drug addiction, um, um, alcoholism, uh, and, and all sorts of um, early, what you call early, early pregnancy, early teenage pregnancies and all that. So if, if we do a good job in their early childhood years and we give them a secure environment, that will really help our kids in the future. And, and it will help them be overcomers, be overcomers of whatever life throws at them. And, and, we, and they stand a much better chance of, of surviving, of thriving, of developing into stronger, uh, stronger people. Okay? Yeah, so number one is we want to praise effort. And, and this one I talked a bit in session two already. So how do we praise their effort we want to be very specific and of course we want to say something that's true oops true and sincere okay so this uh, requires a bit of observational skills from you you will need to <clears throat> look at yeah, observe what your child is doing and then be very very specific about that behavior you want to encourage and see so for example today um, uh, I was really busy with the presentations and the emails and all um, so my husband uh, was taking charge of the kids and he got them to work at doing the household chores my son so my son was tasked with vacuuming the floors and mopping and he uh, my husband is very good at this okay so he will pick out certain behaviors like oh Zach I noticed that you are very detailed in uh, vacuuming the floors at this corner but not at the other corner okay so he's being truthful okay he doesn't just say oh good job you know or very blanket statements like that so so that gives him a uh, positive and actionable feedback then my son knows uh, he needs to be, he, uh, he, he's very um, detailed at this, this side of the living room, but the other side, he didn't do a good job. So the next time he knows that he will have to do a good job on the other side of the room as well. Okay, number two, um, that's to scale back the rewards because I know a lot of us were brought up uh, with the reward charts. Maybe you implement it in your family as well. Now, the problem with reward charts is that they work too well, okay? They work too well at encouraging behaviors but the problem comes when um, the kids become very machinery and very transactional and um, this happened to me last year if you heard me in my in my workshops as well that I shared the story so last year I was very proud of myself I, I came out with a chore chart I gave my kids chores and then I told them oh if you sweep the floor today you get two dollars if you wash the dishes tomorrow you get two dollars so at first it worked really well and they were really motivated to do their chores because they were earning like two dollars right um, and they wanted to use the two dollars to buy toys um, so the problem came one day when I asked them, Hey, um, Kyra, can you help me to uh, wash the dishes? And she said, what are you going to give me? I, am I going to get $2 for it? And I was shocked. I was like, that's not how I want to bring up my children. That's not how I want, to, I want my family to work. Like, do I have to pay you for everything that I ask of you? Do I have to pay you for every good thing, that good deed that you do? That's like... That's uh, not training them to be, or not developing their altruism. So that is um, something I felt that has to change. So I scrapped the whole reward system and I said, no more, no more such rewards, no more stickers, no more money. You do the chores because you're part of this family and, and because you're nice, you're kind, you are helpful and you are a constructive part of this, of this family. Okay, so... Um, it's not to say that all reward charts are bad. If they're working for you, um, that's good. But I would like you to consider this and be a bit more careful, uh, especially when you see these kinds of talk or behaviors surfacing in your children. So I think, uh, I'm sure you, you agree with me that that's not very, it's not very nice, right? Like everything is very, everything the kids do, they will ask, what's in it for me? And the problem comes when, when $2 isn't enough anymore. So if I ask them, will you do the dishes for me for $2? She says, no. Then what are you going to do? You can't do anything, right? Then you offer more money. Oh, like that $2 are not enough. Okay, how about $5? How about $10? How about $20? When's it going to stop? Right? When's it going to stop? Um, okay, last thing about rewards. If you want to reward your children, can. You can do it, but make it a surprise and make it infrequent or very irregular so that the kids don't link the behavior to the reward. They don't see it as like a, a natural, uh, it's, a, it's not a consequence. Like if I 
do if I be if I'm a good girl, I will get ice cream. If I'm if I behave well, I'll get two dollars. Yeah, so it, so they don't make that link. Okay, number three is to examine your own triggers and expectations. If, uh, it's it's if we if we think about like what we want or what our kids we expect our kids to do, then then sometimes we impose all the all of that in on our children, and it's not. Mm, it's not it's not healthy at my one of my issue is that because uh, I'm a homemaker I uh, yeah I guess I work from home but I'm also a homemaker right and and um, this is a this is a self-esteem issue I guess like I'm very triggered when other people say hey you're a homemaker right and then you are you are teacher before so I think your kids are sure do very well in school and so there's this added pressure on me that others expect my kids to excel in school because I was a teacher and because I stay at home with them and 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 when I don't keep that in check what happened was uh, one day in primary uh, one day in primary one my daughter came back and she was like oh I got uh, I, I didn't do well for my test my her final exam that time there was still p1 exams and I was like what like you didn't do you 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 did so many careless mistakes for your maths. Oh no, you know like why like that? You know so I expressed a lot of disappointment, and then she I saw her face and she was very taken aback. She was like, "Oh why are you why are you so upset? You know like um is it really is it did I really do that badly?" And actually she didn't. It was like six marks I think so it was like forty four out of fifty. Um, <laughs> I know I sound like a psycho mom right? I sound like like a tiger mom. Um, but yeah, so that was when I caught myself and like, why am I reacting like that? It's, it's, I'm, I was so badly behaved um, that I didn't encourage her. 44 or 50 is a very decent mark, you know, but it's just that because of the careless mistakes, I was expecting her to not make those careless mistakes so she can get 50. Then she'll be first in class, lah, you know. When I look back, I just felt very bad because I let my own insecurities um, manifest and that and I um, let her let her feel that actually her result she did really badly and her results were not praiseworthy, and that's not on her. It, the issue is on me. So that's one example of what I mean by examine your own triggers and what are your own expectations. Are they fair? And are you are we imposing those on our children? Yeah. This is exactly what we deal with in Elephant Tribe. We, uh, I would say it's it's. It's, there's some work to be done in Elephant Tribe right? because um, we are making you do hard things. Okay, hard things as in some of it is very hard issues that we, we want to make you do, do, deal with. And, um, but the whole issue is that we want to dig deep so that we can bring all these things out to the surface so that they don't, don't affect our kids unconsciously. If they are up in the surface, then we can deal with them. Then we can uh, uh, look at them and they are at these issues and say, okay, this is what I suffered in my childhood. How do I deal with it moving forward? How do I not let it affect my kids? Okay, so, so that, that's what I mean by heart, heart work. Yeah, so but our goal is, if you're, is to tame the mom guilt and the confusion and the overwhelm in parents. And we want to help you find clarity and direction in your parenting and your teaching through Montessori inspired strategies. I didn't mention a lot in the last three days about um, the actual teaching um, of, of your kids, but this is what I well we do in the in the tribe as well. And and some of my members have feed, have given me feedback. Because I always thought it's like a very dry section of Elephant Tribe, right? It's not that fun. But a lot of parents have told me like, hey, you must do more, you must do more of these uh, teaching things because they're like really interesting and, and eye-opening because they are very different from the kind of rote learning styles that we are used to um, in the mainstream education. And I agree with them, so I will double down on that um, in the next few weeks to bring to you all these um, uh, teaching videos about Montessori-inspired um, strategies, okay? So if you can see that picture, this what is one of our maths um, sessions that I was teaching about numbers and using some of these uh, maths Montessori materials to uh, teach things to teach like money. Uh, uh, just a note that it's not that I'm trying to make you buy more materials. I'm not trying to make you like turn your home into a Montessori classroom. That's not my goal. But there are some materials that I do recommend, and I will, and I do recommend alternatives if you don't want to buy the those real materials there are some alternatives that you can use as well that doesn't affect the teaching 
exactly what you get in Elephant Tribe, I realized I didn't really explain very well to y'all. So number one, you'll get clear road maps, exactly where your child is and what steps you need to take next. That means how to bridge the gap, how to help him um, do, how, how to help him uh, learn the next step. So for example, if he is having problems with phonics, for example, if he's having problems with reading um, the longer phonetic words, like in the blue scheme, then, then what are the steps that you need to help him to get him to that reading level? Yeah. Um, another example, if you don't know what I'm talking about for, uh, for blue scheme, Montessori phonics and all that, Example for maths, if he doesn't know how to add 9 and 6 because it passes the 10, right? Then we will show you what exactly to, or how exactly to teach him, like put the numbers, uh, put the big number, or rather circle the big number. So you ask the child to circle 9. That's the number you have to put in your heart or put in your mind. So they'll like actually do a visual plucking of the number and put it in their head. So 9, then after that, then they'll like, then they'll put put out six uh, fingers, then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, so that's a technique called carry, carry, f carrying on, carrying on counting. So all these um, techniques we will teach you guys so that you can teach your kids to fill in the gaps. So you'll get video trainings also on, as I said, the Montessori teaching strategies as well as the parenting bits. Um, I'll show you some examples later. Uh, so and also you'll get a monthly PDF of lesson ideas and printables. This one is very popular with my members. All of them say yes, I use it. Like, I use it extensively. I was trying to uh, ask them whether they're using it. If they're not using it, I don't want to do anymore because it's so much work. But they say they are using it, so I will continue doing it. So monthly you will get a PDF of lesson ideas and printables. Um. Um, for example, I think in Chinese New Year, I gave them a whole set of like uh, Chinese word cards, um, um, printables, art and craft, things like that, that you can just print off your printer and then uh, they're good to go. Okay, and then we have a monthly coaching call to address all your parenting and teaching roadblocks, which means that you don't have to get stuck. Um, and I will, it's a, it's a live video, so like this, like what we are doing now. Okay, so it's a teaching video. Um, that I will that that you submit your questions, then I will go through with you and teach you how to teach or how to solve that problem. Okay, and then um, a community in a Facebook group that you can call on for help if you if you cannot wait for the monthly coaching call, which happens at the end of the month, then you can always uh, ask for help there, and then the members will jump jump in. I will also um, um reply to your questions, so you'll always get help. You are never alone. Yeah. Okay, so uh, one a uh, few ex uh, testimonials. I'm very, very encouraged by this lady, Eileen, and her husband. So my husband was quite skepti skeptical about this idea of elephant tribe. Um, I understand. <laughs> and after, I, it's, it's pretty new in Singapore, right? I mean, these kinds of memberships, it's, it's a new concept. But um, I love it because I love coaching parents. I love like doing this kinds of live video teachings. I love interacting with you guys and answering your questions, yeah. And after I showed him your demonstration on using the golden beats to teach a child to manipulate large numbers, that was the picture I showed you just now, he was quite impressed and told me to continue the subscription so that we can continue to be inspired to find non road learning methods for our kids. Absolutely, yeah. Hi, Chu Piggy, I see your name. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so it's, uh, I am passionate about bringing, about making sure the kids learn that is the easiest way. It's almost like a hack, I guess. The easiest way, the most fun way, the most natural way to them, not through worksheets. A bit of worksheets are fine, and if your kid likes them, so be it. But if your kids don't like the worksheets, then, then I... I, I highly am against like making them do road learning. Okay, and then another lady, Faith, says, Before Tribe, I felt very alone in my journey as a parent and overwhelmed. After joining Tribe, I feel more confident and equipped to look after my child. I've learned a lot from the importance of routines, love languages, that's the parenting um, portion that I speak of, uh, incorporating practical life skill lessons to my child. So yeah, I'm very, very proud of the of my members and, and how they've made progress over a faith just joined us about three months or three months ago. Yeah. So I'm very proud of how much they have learned over the last couple of months. Okay, I think yes, that's all. 
So, Elephant Tribe is now open and there's a fast action bonus that I mentioned yesterday but it will end tonight. It's a 30% off your first billing. So, which means that if you choose a monthly discount, a uh, monthly billing, um, it'll be a, a discount of $8, $9. But if you choose like a longer period of time, then the savings will be more lah, because it's 30%, right? Discount code all in A-L-L-I-N and then you can take down this website that will give you more information about what Elephant Tribe is. Yeah, so I will see you uh, around. <laughs> Don't be a stranger. Send me messages if you need me to reply or answer your questions about Elephant Tribe. And I will see you around. Bye-bye.